whatever car you have, you have to play the part. I've always dressed whatever car I was driving. I had a wardrobe for that vehicle. You become part of the car. You and the car is, is one. My name is Winston Dabbs, and I drive a 1955 uh, XK140 Drophead Coupe. Well, I've owned the 140 probably 20, 25 years, and the roaster I just recently got probably about a year and a half ago. If it's mechanical, electrical device on this planet, I can build it and I can fix it. The helicopter, a jet plane, a diesel truck. People used to come over to my apartment and I have all these car parts laying around in the apartment. They said, what you doing all these car parts? And I said, well, that's my car. Come back in two weeks, I'll give you a ride. This car came out of a trailer park across from the Compton Airport under a pecan tree, wrecked and all tattered, weather beaten, you know, and I just took it and disassembled it and found the parts that I need. I found a good trimmer, put my top and headliner and stuff in. I had it all painted. Well, it all started back in the 70s. A friend of mine, I think, sold me a bug eye spike for $75. Well, in that period in Compton, a lot of blacks owned uh, Jaguars and foreign cars of all sorts. And it was, I guess, a status symbol of success. So I started collecting and building Austin Healy. Sold a lot of them, built a lot of them. Then I uh, quit for whatever the reason was and stored the Jag. And been stored for the last 15 years. I just recently, in the last two years, pulled it out, dusted it off, decided to drive, enjoy life, enjoy the sun. Early Jaguar were handmade. That's why you get the curves and the fenders, because they're made out of aluminum, and you can bend and curve the aluminum better and easier than you can the steel. Well, Jaguar was the first production race car that you can buy off the showroom floor. They fast, <laughs> they will run, without a doubt. I've been up to about 90 miles an hour, 95, and uh, the front end get a little squirrely, and you don't really want to take it too much faster than that. There's practical daily drivers. It's okay if you drive in distance. Practical, not in this day and age, not with all the congestion. People like to zero in on cars like the stage accidents and do all kind of crazy stuff or whatever. So it's not a really a good thing to do. I just drive mine different events and different car shows and stuff like that to keep the battery charged up, the oil circulating and the wheel cylinders from leaking. Because British cars in general, if you let them sit up, they will deteriorate. So I try not to flaunt and get me, I drive a Jag. I let the car do all the talking. People ask me, is that your car? I say, no, I just wipe it off, I keep it clean. The roads are dirty, and that was part of the reason why I painted the wheels white. Because chrome wheels, they get real dirty, and I'm old, and wire chrome wires is for a young man. White wire wheels is for old men. You put a water hose and soap, and you threw. Chrome, you got to wipe all day. But they pick up a lot of dirt on the wheels, and there's a lot of dust and particles in the air, just road grime. And when you drive, when you have the top down, that dust and dirt the turbulence come inside the cab and it gets in your eyes and if you're on a long distance you almost need gargles and you need the gloves because of the steering wheel and the shifting and if you're driving in the evening time you really don't need a heater or whatever because you get enough heat off the engine to keep you warm but uh it's just part of the the romance of the vehicle Which, what we've been looking at is accumulation of a whole bunch of money spent and a whole bunch of time. 
the big, big old dollar sign be right behind that exhaust pipe. The outcome is the chrome and the shiny paint and the seats and all that kind of stuff. You see an hours on the phone, calling back east, wherever you can find the parts or whatever, because in this market right here, it's not what it costs, it's can you find it. Right now I'm in, uh, in the, say the highlight of my life. I'm on, on the downhill side and I'm just enjoying life as, as it's to be. And fortunate enough, I kept a vehicle that now is worth a whole ton of money. If I really know that the car was value of it like it is right now to put a more exotic paint job on it, I would have completely disassembled the car, but I didn't do that. I just sprayed the frame and replaced all the rubbers and all the seals and gaskets and been driving the car. Cause there's no sense in having a car that you look at and see how beautiful it is if you can't get in and go to San Francisco. Like right now, you say, let's go to Frisco. I say, well, let's gas up and let's go.